Hello and welcome everyone. Today I'm gonna teach you a bit more math and we're going back to the vectors like we did last time but this one even more basic and as you can already see from the title up here we're gonna talk about vectors and what they are and how they form linear combinations and first let's just write the title down. So, this will be an introduction to vectors and linear combination. The vector is really important for the field of linear algebra and you could say it's the central object in linear algebra. But first, if you have no idea what a vector is or if you want um, a reminder, let's look at an example. And for that, let's look at an example in the two-dimensional space because that's easy to draw and really vectors are the same in any dimension, so it doesn't really matter where we look at it, but like, like I said, the second dimension is quite easy to draw. So let's draw two-dimensional coordinate system. And on the x-axis we have one, two, three, and on the y-axis the same. And now let's imagine if x is 1, 2, then we could imagine it just as this point, which is at 1, measured on the x-axis. So here, and at 2 as measured on the y-axis. And then it meets at this point here. And then we write it as a vector in this column form, 1, 2. 1 is the first dimension and 2 is the second one. But you can also imagine a vector in a slightly different way. And this is just for your visualization. It doesn't change the vector at all, but some people like to imagine it as a point, and others prefer to look at it as an arrow. So you could say that the same vector 1, 2 oops, is an arrow from the origin point 0, 0, and it goes all the way here. It goes 1 to the right and 2 up, and then it ends here. This can be drawn with this arrow. So it doesn't really matter if you do it like this or like this. Um, typically what I've seen is that for the one most people just draw a point because it gets less cluttered in your drawing. Um, if you do a point instead of just many arrows, especially if you have many uh, vector entries close to the origin, then you just get like a lot of arrows and you can't draw them properly anymore, but you could still draw the points properly. But the vectors are a great help to imagine them early on because they uh, 
can be useful to imagine if you're doing addition, for example. But we'll see this in a bit. Now another thing about how to write them. This is also a way you write them. Um, so this can be a way to write down the vector x. And that is a common way of writing or naming vectors in physics and also maybe in engineering, but I'm not sure because I just study pure math and uh, we just wrote vectors as uh, small letters. So this is important, this is a small x, this is not a capital X. Vectors are always uh, lowercase letters, like x, y is also a very common one, for example. So this is the usual symbol. just the vector we can do very much so. Next we're gonna look at what we can do with vectors and we call these the operations on vectors. The first one I want to talk about is the scalar multiplication. And this can look like this. You take any scalar c and you multiply it with x. And in math we don't uh, usually write a point or something in between. If we multiply two symbols then we just write them next to each other. Now, this looks kind of weird, so let's look at an example again. Slide this over. So we could have the scalar 2. So this is just any real number. So I should probably write this below. So is from the real numbers in this case and x can be any vector but it'll just say it's two dimensional in the real numbers okay let's keep with our vector from earlier which was one two and then what we do in scalar multiplication is we multiply the scalar with each entry and then we get 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 2 is 4 and what this does is it makes the vector longer or shorter. So if this number here is smaller than 1, then the arrow will become shorter, and if it's bigger than 1, like now, the vector will become longer. Let's look at this here in this drawing. Let's slide this over a bit so we have a bit of space. Now the vector 2, 4 is 2 to the right and 4 up. So oh, this is not really draw this again. So this will be 2, 
4. And you can see it points in the same direction as our original vector x, but it's just got marker. And that's all we do with scalar multiplication if we look at it in an image way. Now let's see what we can also do is addition. And in addition, we take two vectors x and y. That's also a vector down, maybe in blue. So x will be a vector and y will also be a vector. And now let's also look at an example. So this could be our vector 1, 2 that we looked at the whole time. And now let's add the vector 1 and 1 onto now. And here again, we will do it entry wise. So the first entry will be 1 plus 1, and the second one will be 2 plus 1. And in total, that's 2, 3. And this is like and if we look at it in our image in a second, this is like oops, this is ugly. It's like chaining. sense, but let's look at it in this drawing. Now the vector 1, 1, let's also draw this. It's going to be a bit cluttered now. Let's resize this and make it tiny. And put it over here. And now the vector 1, 1, is, is this one here. That's one one. That's our y. And now if we look at where we end up, if we first go the way of x, so one two, then we go here. And if we then take the way that y tells us, which is 1, 1, then we go here. And then we end up at 2, 3. We end up here. So that will be our result vector. That's 2, 3. And we can now draw this in two different ways. Either, either we could first go x and then y, or we go first y and then x. You see, if you take these vectors and like move this to the end of our first vector, then we end up at this space. And also, if we only do this. Oh god, I can't move this. The purple is in the way. Let's erase the purple for now. And if we first do the green one and then the black one, we still end up in the same place. And that's how you can imagine vector addition. Okay. And now. We can combine these two operations for another 
remember very important concept in linear algebra and that is what I already kind of teasered in the title the linear combination So I like this. Okay. Now what's a linear combination? A linear combination of two vectors is the following. We take a times x and add b times y. And that is linear combination or delinear combination I guess you could also say of x and y and again here a and b are scalars so they are in R for example and x and y are vectors so if for example they are in R2 but they could also be in R3, R4 or simply Rn so that doesn't matter but we'll stick with R2 as an example for now okay so to make it even more accessible Let's write down an example. So, for example, we could do 1 times our favorite ve vector, 1, 2, and add 2 times 1, 1. And then we would get 1, 2, and 2, 2. In total, this combination would give us 3 and 4. And as a side note, these two vectors, so the 1, 2 and the 1, 1, let's make it these two vectors can create every point in the two with their linear combination and this works now every time two vectors that you choose do not lie on one line in space a very obvious example for that is uh, if we have the vector 1, 0 and 0, 1 if we then allow a times that plus b the other vector, then obviously you get uh, a zero plus zero b, and that's just a b. So if we can choose a and b from any real number, then of course the result here can be any vector in this or any point in this R2 space and yeah, the same works with any two vectors as long as they're not on one line and uh, of 
course, if they're not the zero vector, because then we couldn't do much with that. But that's, that's a neat little result that you use quite a bit. Okay, now let's look a bit more at the notation. So let's say we're taking a closer look at X. Now, if we keep with our example where X in R2, then we write x in general, if we don't know the numbers yet. And this has two entries, and we call the upper one x1 with the subsequent w, and the second one x2. And both x1 and x2 are real number in this case. And I already told you it could be in the bigger dimension, so similarly if x is in R3 then we could write it as x1, x2 x3. And uh, I'm sure you can see the pattern here. And also all those separate numbers would all just be real numbers. And these xi, so like we can insert a number for i and now it's i describes all these entries in general. And yeah, I already told you the, the entries, and these are um, components or more commonly, I think you would say the entries of X. So just, just some mathematical notation and how we would talk about these. Now that we have looked at some theory, let's look at uh, a task that we could solve with this new knowledge. So, let's say, let's say we have two vectors. And the first one is V, and that has the values 1, minus 2, and 1. So now we're in the three-dimensional case. And we have another vector, which is 0, 1, and minus 1. And uh, now, what can we say about the combinations of those, of all the linear combinations. Um, if we now look, zoom in a bit, if we now look at every possible combination, then we would get C times the first vector, 1, minus 2, 1, and d, 0, 1, minus 1. And now, uh, I've previously told you if you have two vectors and they're not on one line, then you can um, create every vector in R2 with that, but now we have three-dimensional vectors, and we could still uh, create every vector on a plane, so an R2 subspace, but 
not every vector in a three-dimensional space because we would need three vectors for this but we can say a bit about what kind of vectors we can create with this uh, combination if we are allowed to choose C and D freely now obviously here we get C times 1 so that's just C and from this one we just get D times 0 so that's 0 and then in the second row or in the second dimension we get minus 2C and 1D and in the third one we get this we get C and minus D Um, now we can see uh, if we were to be asked like the task that I uh, found is asking now what do the components of this uh, linear combination always add up to so components of all linear combinations add up to so now we just do C plus 0 minus or just plus minus 2c plus d plus c minus d and that's the same as c minus 2c plus c plus d and minus d and now well let's keep it a green and now we see that we have c and c but minus 2c so that cancels out and the plus d and the minus d also cancel each other out so that's just zero so no matter how we choose c and d in the end every vector that comes out here will add up to zero if you add all the components now the next task with these two vectors is let's write this in blue or next question or assignment, whatever you want to call it now we want to find C and D such that C, V plus D, W will be Three, three, and minus six. Okay, now we already calculated uh, a bit about the linear combination, so we already know that CV plus DW will be exactly what we wrote up here so this will be oops I think I need a bit more space let's make this a bit smaller and disappear okay so we already know that this is C um, minus 2C plus D and C minus but now we want this to be equal to 3, 3, minus 6 and this is basically giving us three uh, equations so 
through this wall and phi. In the first dimension, then c is equal to 3. But well, that's already a great solution. And the second dimension gives us minus 2c plus d equals 3. And the third dimension gives us c minus d is minus 6. So we already know c is equal to 3. And now we can insert this into these two to get a solution for d. And really we only need to do it on one equation, so we'll just do it in both to be sure that it all works out to be fine and to get this vector. Okay, so in this one, if we insert c equal 3, then we get minus 2 times 3 plus d is 3, and this is equivalent if we add 6 on both sides, then on the left side we only have d left, and on the right side we add 6, we get 9. So d will probably have to be 9. But let's also make sure this works with this one. In this one, if we insert the 3 for c, we get 3 minus d is minus 6. And now let's I'll write this down. Let's add d on both sides. So then on the left side we have 3. And on the right side we have minus 6 plus d. And now to isolate d, let's add 6 on both sides. And then we have 9 is equal to d. And that's pretty good because now we have this for both of the equations, so that works out well. So now we have found the c and d. And let's just make sure that we did it correctly. And Let's check. So 3 times v and 9 times w will be 3 times 1 minus 2 and 1. So 1 minus 2 and 1 plus 9 times 0, 1. 0, 1, minus 1. And close. Okay. Now this will be 3, minus 6, then 3, plus 0, 9, and minus 9. Or negative 9. I don't know what. And if we add these, we get 3, and 3, and minus 6, which I think is exactly what we wanted. Yeah. Oop. Up here, 3, 3, and minus 6. So we did it correctly, and we need 3 and 9. Okay, now let's get another page right on this one. Now, the next and last question was why is the combination three, three, six? impossible for these two vectors. Now, we have already shown at the very start, um, let's write this down, first, okay. 
we have already shown combination add up to zero and the components of this vector here three three and six uh, they add up to twelve and that is clearly not zero so be one possible solution here, but we can also calculate it. So this is sort of what we call in math a proof by contradiction. So this might be a bit confusing of how I write it, but that is a, a very common way to argue in mathematics. So let's say, assume, assume it would not be impossible. So assume, assume there exist scalars C and D in the real numbers. So that CV plus DW would be the desired vector 3, 3, 6. Now let's assume that could be the case. Then this, uh, if we just write this down in a bit more detail, again CV plus DW have shown at the start that this is let's see again c and then minus 2c plus d and c minus d minus 2c plus d and c minus d and this would have to be 3, 3 and 6 now immediately we see again that these are three equations c equals 3 and minus 2c plus d equals 3 and c minus d equals 6 now we already see immediately that c has to be 3 for this to make any sort of sense but now let's again enter this into the other two equations that also need to be true for the whole thing to work then if we enter c in this we get minus 6 plus d equals 3 and if we add 6 then we get the same as before we get d is equal to 9 now, this equation here gives us 3 minus d equals 6. And now, let's add d on both sides. Then this is 3 equals 6 plus d. And now, isolate d. Then we get minus 3 equals d. And now here is where the contradiction comes in. For the second equation to work, we need d equals 9. But for the third equation to work, we need d equals minus 3. And now both of these can be true at the same time.
equal 9 and d equal minus 3 can both be true at the same time. It's pretty obvious. So what we usually do in math is right, uh, we draw this um, this symbol. Um, this means there's a contradiction, it doesn't work. So, because all of this that we did hinges on the fact that we assumed there would exist two real numbers so that this equation here could be true. We assumed that, and we have shown that if we assume this, then like the rules of mathematics would lead us to a very big problem because d can't be both of these values at the same time. So this doesn't hold and from that we can follow that our assumption here is false. Therefore, There can not exist C and D in the real numbers such that CV plus DW is 3, 3, and 6. Or you could say this linear combination is impossible. We have shown it two different ways. The first one uses that the combination would add up to zero and this vector doesn't. And also we have used short double proof by contradiction. So that's everything I prepared for this little introduction to vectors and linear combinations. Um, I hope you could relax a bit and maybe learn a little bit as well if you didn't know this already. And I'll see you soon with some more math and